Where are the best places to invest in property in 2023? We've picked out some sure things, some up and comers, and a couple for if you're feeling brave. Let's start with our sure things, and these are in no particular order. First up is Derby, which has actually earned itself an upgrade from our up and comers list last year. Prices in Derby last year grew by 9%, and we believe it's got a lot further to go because Derby has got so much going for it, but there's a real shortage of quality rental accommodation. As well as having a university and great connectivity to the rest of the country, there are a lot of major employers in Derby, many of whom employ a lot of young graduates, and those young graduates, many of them, will want to rent in the area, and many of them will be earning well, so they'll want to rent somewhere pretty high-end. But there's an almost complete lack of high-end rental accommodation, so we believe there's going to be upward pressure on rents, which allows room for property prices to grow as well. Also, Derby has among the highest per person earnings outside of London, yet property prices are still relatively low. So affordability is good. And again, that means there's room for prices to move upwards. So those are all reasons that we're excited about Derby. Our next pick is just down the road in Nottingham. Nottingham, we picked out as one of our hotspots last year. And indeed, property prices grew by more than anywhere else in the UK. And it's not surprising because in common with Derby, Nottingham has got so much going for it as well as its top universities. It's got a diverse range of employers and it's got great connectivity, not just within the UK, but within Nottingham itself. It's got a really good tram network. So we see real growth potential for Nottingham within the city centre, but also in some of the more slightly suburban residential areas that have got strong tram links into the city. Next, we pick Leeds. Not a lot you need to say about Leeds. It's always a strong performer, it was fourth in the UK last year, and it's just always up there because again, it's so strong for education and employment. Leeds is interesting because it had a lot of construction going into the last boom and there was an oversupply when that boom turned into a bust. And as a result, not so much has been built in Leeds recently. And although there is building happening now, a lot of it is for the build to rent sector rather than accommodation that's available for sale. So again, growing city, lots of demand, not so much in the way of supply. So we can see Leeds continuing to do very well. Our next pick is Manchester, both Manchester city centre and Greater Manchester. And Manchester is a really interesting one because unlike Leeds, there's been loads of new development in Manchester. And indeed, a couple of years ago, there were all these headlines about how it was crazy. It was going to be a ghost town. There's no way that all these thousands and thousands of new apartments would be filled. In fact, it's been the complete opposite. And indeed, in the third quarter of 2022, there were just 360 rental properties available in the whole of Manchester. So a massive shortage and that caused rents to absolutely boom. Asking rents increased by 15.8%, but rents that are actually achieved increased by 19.5%. So that shows that even though rents were rising really fast, people were actually willing to pay over the asking price just to secure somewhere because there is so much demand. That means that even though prices in Manchester have been growing, because rents have been growing as well, that means that there is still further headroom, we believe, for them to grow further. It also means we believe that Greater Manchester is going to do well because there'll be ever more people who are either priced out of the city centre or can't find anywhere at all or are drawn to the city centre by all the jobs being created but want to live in a house rather than a flat. And as a result, there are plenty of places in Greater Manchester with good tram or rail links which should benefit from the fact that Manchester continues to be such a strong performer. And the last of our safe bets is Liverpool. Liverpool didn't perform as strongly last year, but it's been close to the top for many years now and continues to be a strong place to invest. So while it's not the location that we're most excited about going into this year, it's got to have a place on the list. Let's move on to our up and comers. And the first on our list is Newcastle, which has actually earned itself an upgrade. It was on our For the Brave list last year, but we no longer believe you have to be so brave to get into Newcastle because there are some signs that it's starting to line up as a really promising investment opportunity. The drawback to Newcastle has always been that even though property prices are low, rents have also been very low. And that means that you're not really being compensated enough in terms of yield by taking a bit of a risk and going for somewhere where the growth maybe isn't going to come until a bit later. That is starting to change though. The average monthly rent in Newcastle is now nearly £1,000 per month. So that's below the UK average, but only just. And that's apparently been driven by tenant competition, which is 79% higher than it was a year ago. Another very promising sign is that the first build to rent development has been announced in Newcastle. So the major investor LNG has announced that it's going to be investing 60 million into two residential towers that's going to provide over 300 apartments in the centre of Newcastle. 
So they are a big institutional investor. They do a lot of analysis and research and they like to price at a premium. They like to push rents and go for the high end. So the fact that they're moving in seems to suggest that they think that there's the potential there for rents to go higher and be pushed upwards. And there's going to be enough demand in Newcastle to absorb this extra supply at the higher end, which suggests that it feels positive about Newcastle on the whole. So I see that as a good sign for individual investors who may want to follow in their footsteps. And that's why we are going to be actively targeting Newcastle for the first time in terms of trying to find stock for our clients. Our next up and comer is Belfast. Belfast also performed strongly last year and it appears to have a really long way to go. It's verging on being a safe bet at this point, I would say, because there seems to be so much upside potential. It's really interesting. If you go and look at the home track list, it along with Aberdeen are the only places that are still below their previous peak. And Belfast is significantly below, so 22% below the peak in prices that it saw in 2007. Now that doesn't in itself mean that it's cheap and it's going to get back to where it was. It may not get back to where it was for a very, very long time because there was a very aggressive boom in Belfast. But the fact is that the city has got so much going for it. Property prices are still so relatively cheap and it's just started moving in the last couple of years. It suggests to me that over the next couple of years it's going to have a very strong run. And our final up and comer is Cardiff. Again, you could argue for this being in the safe bets list because it has performed so strongly already. And this is somewhere else that's received a lot of institutional investment. So LNG are at it again. They recently announced that they'd be investing another 200 million in Cardiff to build over 700 apartments. And that takes their total investment in Cardiff to over a billion pounds. They're clearly seeing a lot to like in Cardiff and we are as investors too. And finally, a couple of picks if you're feeling brave. Our first pick, if you're feeling brave, is London. And you do need to be brave to get into London now. It had a great run. That great run has very much come to an end. It's one of the worst performers last year. It's probably going to be one of the worst performers this year as well. But there are opportunities if you're wanting to get in for the long term. Because over the long term, it is such a great place to invest. It's a major global city. There will always be lots of demand. Fantastic. The challenge is finding the right entry point. And there hasn't really been one because London went on a huge run in the first half of the cycle, loads of price growth, not so much in the way of wage growth, therefore yields really fell and it just didn't make any sense to be buying in London. London is still very vulnerable, so with rising interest rates, I wouldn't be at all surprised if prices fell in London over the year. But because there will be a lot of people looking to get out because their investments just don't make sense anymore, that does create the opportunity to get in at a good price for a long-term hold. You've also got rents which are increasing really fast. So I would only be going for London if I was going to be in it for the long term and if I managed to identify a particular bargain. But if those are in place and you're feeling a bit brave, then London could be worth a look. Another one for the brave is Glasgow, which at first makes no sense in this category. Glasgow has come on such a long way in recent years. It's now a major city with great employment, yet property prices are still cheap, rents are strong. It appears to have everything going for it. So why would you need to feel brave to be getting into Glasgow? Well, it's because of the political environment. So just recently, the Scottish government announced that the rate of the Scottish equivalent of stamp duty that investors need to pay is going to go up. So investors already need to pay more than owner occupiers, just like in England and Wales, but the amount is now going up even more. It's another signal that despite the fact that there's a massive shortage of rental property in Scotland, and rents are going up really fast, the government just does not like property investors. So I'd say you do have to be brave to go and build a business in a location where there is such a strong dislike of investors and it's not the kind of business where you could just pick it up and move it somewhere else. You're pretty anchored. But in Glasgow, you could make the argument that the investment case is strong enough that that's a risk you're willing to take. Even if you're not going to be investing in Glasgow or anywhere in Scotland, it's still well worth knowing about the measures that the Scottish Government have brought in over the last year or so, which includes a rent freeze and eviction ban. And these are worth knowing about because we've seen it before, when a policy is brought in in Scotland, it often gets picked up by politicians elsewhere in the UK. So watch this video next, where we run through what these measures are, the effect that they've already had in Scotland, and the argument that we see for how they could be coming the way of investors elsewhere in the UK.